Speaker for Regina Leuven. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. The late Saskatchewan Premier Alan Blakeney defined social democracy as a fair share for all in a free society. And the NDP certainly believes in a free society. In the last Parliament, we were the only party to stand up and vote against Bill C-51, the Conservative Surveillance Law. In this Parliament, we were the only party to stand up and oppose the Conservative motion calling on the state to condemn controversial speech about Israel. But as important as civil liberties are, and as good as the NDP's record is in this area, civil liberties are not what define us fundamentally as social democrats. Uh, liberal is also a de derivative of liberty. Uh, even in the Conservative Party, uh, there is a libertarian strain, even if it was pretty difficult to detect under the last Conservative government. Mr. Speaker, what really defines us as Social Democrats is our concern for what Premier Blakeney described as a fair share, a more equitable distribution of income and wealth. We believe in equality not just for its own sake, but also because all the evidence indicates that a more equitable distribution of income and wealth leads to more happiness, to better health, and to less crime. So the trend towards worsening inequality is quite troubling. In recent years and decades, a vastly disproportionate share of income gains have been concentrated in too few hands at the very top of the scale. The tax system is one of the most powerful tools available to government to address those inequalities. So Mr. Speaker, I believe that this House should evaluate Bill C-2 in terms of its effect on income inequality. And at this point, I will shift from quoting Alan Blakeney to invoking Clint Eastwood, because Bill C-2 has the consistency of a spaghetti western. Allow me to review the good, the bad, and yes, the ugly aspects of this legislation. The good thing about Bill C-2 is that it includes tangible measures to collect a fair share of tax from the rich. Specifically, it would increase by 4% the top income tax rate on incomes over $200,000. Mr. Speaker, this is entirely consistent with what the NDP has achieved at the provincial level. In Nova Scotia, the NDP government increased by 4% the top rate on incomes over $150,000. In a minority legislature in Ontario, the NDP amended a budget to add two points of income tax on incomes over half a million dollars. The most excellent NDP government in Alberta has quite correctly gone from a flat tax to a progressive income tax system. As part of our election platform in Saskatchewan, the NDP is proposing an additional percentage point of tax on incomes over $175,000. The other positive aspect of this legislation, Mr. Speaker, is to restore the TFSA contribution limit to $5,500 per year. And I think it's important to note, Mr. Speaker, that the previous Conservative government's uh, proposal to increase that limit to $10,000 uh, would only affect people who have extra money left over after the 18% of income that can be contributed to RSPs and after the $5,500 that can still be contributed to TFSAs. In 2013, fewer than 7% of eligible Canadians made the maximum TFSA contribution. Mr. Speaker, it therefore stands to reason that probably only up to that 7% of Canadians would stand to gain anything from a higher limit on TFSA contributions. So restoring that limit to $5,500 is clearly a progressive move. That's the good. Now moving on to the bad. Bill C-2 uh, includes a so-called middle class tax cut that does not actually help the middle class. 
And I think the Liberals might be a little bit confused between cutting the middle tax bracket or changing taxes in such a way as to help people with middle incomes. Because what this bill proposes is a tax cut that only applies above $45,000. And that's more than the median Canadian income, Mr. Speaker. To receive the maximum benefit, someone would need to have an income of more than $90,000 per year. To put that in perspective, Mr. Speaker, if you were working as a nanny for the Prime Minister, you would receive nothing from the middle class tax cut. However, the Prime Minister himself, and indeed all members of this House, will get the maximum benefit of about $700. But we don't need the money. So what are the alternatives, Mr. Speaker? We in the NDP had proposed to reduce the first tax bracket that applies to everyone. We also proposed to boost the working income tax benefit that is more targeted towards lower incomes. Uh, in our election platform in Saskatchewan, the provincial NDP is proposing to boost the basic personal exemption, which again applies to everyone. So it would be extremely easy to design and implement a middle class tax cut that actually goes to the middle class. But in all the discussion that we've heard about this bill, I haven't heard a coherent explanation from the Liberals as to why they're pushing ahead with a tax cut that only goes to incomes above $45,000 rather than enacting a tax cut that would include all Canadian taxpayers. Uh, and I noticed that many people on this side of the House are, are speaking today uh, because the Liberals have given up their speaking slots in this debate, and I would suggest that's because they don't actually have uh, a very good answer uh, to this question. Um, so that's the bad. Now moving on uh, to the ugly, Mr. Speaker, this bill does not even add up. I would argue that the Liberal tax proposal during the election uh, was palatable to many progressive Canadians because it was promised to pay for itself. Even though the Liberal uh, proposal was not uh, very well targeted, uh, you know, it at least seemed that a redistribution from the very rich to the upper middle class might be a move in the direction of equality. It has since been revealed that um, this bill will not pay for itself, uh, that it will cost uh, more than a billion dollars a year in lost federal revenue. So in effect, what the government is proposing is to borrow money to fund a tax break for people who do not really need it. Mr. Speaker, how could we make up the lost revenue? Well, since 2000, Liberal and Conservative governments have slashed the federal corporate tax rate in half. We have not seen the promised boost in investment. On the contrary, we see private non-financial corporations sitting on a record hoard of cash. The Parliamentary Budget Officer estimates that each point of corporate income tax that we might restore would collect $2 billion of revenue. Now, Mr. Speaker, one might argue uh, that with low commodity prices and depressed corporate profits, that the corporate tax would not actually bring in that much. But that's the beauty of corporate taxes. They function as an automatic stabilizer. When the economy is depressed and profits are low, they don't take very much money out of it. But uh, as the economy starts to recover and we want to move towards a balanced budget, corporate taxes will automatically collect more revenue. So I would urge the government to very seriously consider at least partially reversing corporate tax cuts as a way of starting to collect the additional revenue that will be wanted uh, as our economy uh, begins to recover. Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, there are enough positive elements in Bill C-2 that the NDP is prepared to support it on second reading. But there is a huge amount of room for improvement in targeting the so-called middle class tax cut to those who really need it and in collecting the revenue that will ultimately be needed if this government is ever going to balance the budget. Thank you.
Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Mount Royal. Mr. Speaker, and I want to congratulate the Honourable Member for Regina Leuven on a very entertaining speech. It's rare that we hear Clint Eastwood quoted in this chamber. I don't think he's quoted enough. So let me quote him from Heartbreak Ridge. Clint Eastwood said, improvise, adapt, and overcome. I enjoyed how the Honourable Member improvised and adapted. During the election campaign, the NDP did not favour a tax increase for those earning over $200,000. During the election campaign, the NDP did not favor a tax decrease earning for those earning less than $45,000. But suddenly, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member for Regina Leuven is adapting, improvising, and trying to overcome by criticizing all of the things that we're now doing and saying that the NDP believes this and this and this, that they said completely the opposite in the election campaign. So I would like to ask, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member for Regina Leuven, um, how can he possibly improvise, adapt, and overcome in this way when he's now contradicting what his party said in the election campaign? The Honourable Member for Regina Leuven. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I will refrain from quoting Clint Eastwood as to uh, whether the member opposite is, is feeling lucky. But, um, uh, m m m m m Mr. Speaker, I'll make the point that there are many ways of making the tax system uh, more progressive. Um, in the election campaign, the NDP proposed a reversal of uh, corporate tax cuts as a way of collecting more revenue and funding important public services and uh, infrastructure. Uh, the Liberal Party chose not to make that proposal. Uh, they proposed uh, a modest increase in the top personal tax rate. Uh, that is quite consistent with what the NDP has achieved at the provincial level, and we're happy to support it in this House as well. I think the real question, Mr. Speaker, is whether the Liberal government will actually start reversing corporate tax cuts in order to collect a fair share of revenue and start to move back towards a balanced budget. Thank you. Question.